talking about frames of mind for like getting through hard things earlier. But I'll give you another one, which is there was a guy, um, a friend of a friend, successful entrepreneur, and he got really bad cancer, like super bad, really fast, right? And I think he lost his like trachea and some other stuff, and like they thought he was going to die, and he ended up making it. Um, and, uh, and he was telling my friend, he was like, man, so grateful. And it was like, about, you think it was like the whole I see life a different way now. It wasn't that. It was while he was going through it. And his reasoning was, how cool is it that I get to live this part of the human experience? He's like, so many people don't get to live this. Like, I get to know what it's like to have cancer. Like, so many people live their whole lives and then die not knowing what cancer was like. I get to know that. And I just thought about that. It's like a very interesting frame. It's like, whether it's bankruptcy, going to jail, like, even the depths of human suffering, and some people who are still going through that trauma, I'm not saying that, like, I'm not justifying it. It's just a frame on, like, being human is the rainy and the sunny days. Like, you can't skip weather. And so I think, like, embracing the totality of the experience can give you gratitude for what feels locally like a low point. But most of the defining moments in our life, broken leg, then he doesn't have to go to war, right? When you expand the time horizon, those are the things that create us. And so, again, I mean, I talk to my 85-year-old self a lot, which sounds really weird. Um, but whenever I'm, like, complaining about something, one of the common things he'll ask me back is like, well, who do you want to be? And I'll be like, well, I want to be like this. And he's like, do you think that person would not go through hard times? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, it sounds like you're wishing for the outcome, but not willing to pay the price. He's like, are you willing to pay the price? And I'm like, well, yeah. He's like, well, this is what paying the price feels like. Embrace it. Because these will be the stories you tell. And so I think that's, that's given me the ability to weather Rainy days, sunny days, rainy days, sunny days, rainy days, sunny, 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 sunny. Because like there are a lot of those days in the entrepreneurial journey because that rocky cutscene is five years, not 30 seconds. And so I think you need as many of those tools as you can possibly put together in your tool belt to just keep going. So, so beautifully said. So, so beautifully said. So, so beautifully said. So, so beautifully said. I, I want to highlight, too, the part about sleeping in the gym and taking a picture of it. You post that on social media that day, and it gets zero likes. You post it on social media today, and it gets a million. And I think there's something interesting to that. It's like the more you build the story the more the low points actually meet and the greater the yeah I'll give you something that you probably didn't expect from me on this one it's actually I think it's a smiley face so if you post it when you're going through it people will respond saying keep chasing your dreams keep at it etc and then when you start succeeding all of a sudden they won't do that and then later they'll be like it's cool that you came from it but like when you're on the come up, and I remember I wrote this, I wrote this essay and I'm, I've actually tried to find it. And it was because I, I, I liked creative writing. I had a creative writing scholarship back in the, like I didn't actually take that scholarship. But anyways, point is I've liked writing for a long time. And I wrote this essay to myself because I'm a weirdo. Um, I said, everyone believes in the American dream until it comes true. And so that was like the heading. And it was, it was this weird observation that I had because like everyone was rooting for me when I was sleeping on the floor. So like in my head, I head back home, everybody that I was running away from, but everyone in the local, like the people at my gym and stuff, they were like rooting for me. You know what I mean? They're like, good for you, chasing your dreams. Like, you know, you're, you're sleeping at the gym. Like, you're gonna get it. You're gonna make it, man, right? But like nine months later, when I had like a team and I had a manager and like, I wasn't at the gym every hour, every day. I was working from home sometimes because I got more done because it wouldn't, you know, disrupt me. Um, and I would show up to the gym or I'd show up to a second location and they'd be like, oh, big man, like, can't be too bothered by us. Like, don't forget us, little big, right? You know, all that stuff. And I remember being like, when did I, I was like, when did I go from the underdog to the man? As in like working for the man, which is a setting that Gen Z probably is not now. But um, I think that there's a quote that I think, I mean, Chris Williamson said that I really heard, he has a huge quote, but anyways, he, he said, 
people root for you on your way up because you remind them of your dreams. People root for you on your way up because you remind them of their dreams. People root for you on your way up because you remind them of their dreams. Remind them of their dreams. Remind them of their dreams. Remind them, 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 remind them. Rainy days. Sunny days. Rainy days. Sunny, 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 sunny. Sunny, sunny, sunny. Demons be gone. Be gone, demons. Be gone. 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 So this is something that I learned about later that 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 that, that stems from a psychological concept called the solid. she's giving advice to somebody who's not her, right? And they have postulated why this is. Now you could say you've removed the emotions from it, you've removed the, the tensions, whatever you want to say. But what we do know is that people give better advice than they follow. And so if you pair that concept with the idea that no one has more context on your life than you do, then you have a very powerful combo. And so one of the issues that I've had with like therapists and performance coaches and things like that is that I, I've done a hand, I would say maybe I've spent like five, maybe 10 hours in total in a setting like that. I'm not very good at it. Um, and it's because I usually feel like I'm spending the majority of my time trying to give them enough context in order to give me advice, right? But they don't know every one of my skill sets. They don't know every one of my backgrounds. They don't know the how that business deal, like he kind of looked a little dodgy, but I didn't have time to get more context to it so that they could give me the advice, right? And so I have failed at most of those things. And so when I tried this experiment, it was because I was actually really stressed about a decision. And so I said, okay, and this has been a mental practice of mine, was just talking to my 85 year old self. But I was like, let me formalize this a little bit. I'm actually gonna write it out in a document. And so I, I started talking to my future self. And it was kind of interesting is um, it, I could hear myself laughing at myself. So like, I'm like, this thing isn't happening fast enough. Like, I don't know what's going on. And then I'd be like, what did you expect? You're trying to build a billion dollar thing in what a year? And then I'm like, well, I mean, no. And I'm like, well, what's the objective? And I'm asking the same questions I would ask a portfolio company or CEO, right? Or whatever. And I'm now getting coached by me. 
And some people might take that as like wildly egotistical, which hopefully they don't. But the other side of it is that like, this person has two things that no therapist has. They have complete context on my situation and they have completely aligned incentives. And there's no one else in the entire world wasn't until I met Alex and then I I met him and we went on our first date I remember I went home that night and the, the only thought that I was left with after going on a date with him was I just want to keep talking to him like I'm so interested in him and even if we don't keep dating I hope we can be friends like that was what I was really thinking because I was just like I just really liked being around him and I went home and I looked at that list and I was like I literally think he fits it all and that was when I was like, you should keep dating this guy. I think that oftentimes, you know, it's like, what's the question? Are you the person that the person you are looking for is looking for? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one thing that we can't be blind to is, does the person we want want us back, want us back, want us back? And I think I was really cognizant, of, I was really self-aware enough of where I was at it's like, I'm not going to find somebody who's like got it all figured out because I don't either. But I'm like, a really fast work in progress right now. And so I want somebody else who is. Yeah, a thousand percent. I love that. So when you meet Alex, he's a very, I want to say, strong man. Yeah. I don't necessarily just mean physically, but like his presence. Yeah. I would label him as an alpha male. Yeah. But I also think of you as an alpha female. When you entered the relationship, were you at all concerned about losing your confidence or your independence or just really like how you really freaking show Because you show up with like energy and dominance, which I freaking love, girl. I made it a goal not to be diminished because I think many people around him do get that way. And I looked at it as an opportunity to become more confident stronger and a better version of myself because I didn't blame him anytime we were in a room and people didn't hear me and I think that a lot of women do that and I am not saying that I'm right at all at all at all but what worked for me and what I'm actually really fucking glad that I did is that I didn't say I wish he was quieter. I wish Alex wouldn't talk so much. I wish he wasn't going to be so powerful. I said, what can I learn from him? I am so grateful that I'm married to somebody that I can learn so much from. And I've learned so much from him about that. Like, he has made me so much more confident and powerful because I get to learn from him. He is very confident. And in so many ways, when I met him, I admired that so much about him. I was like, he's way more confident than me, for sure. Do you know how many people do the opposite, though? I know. 
So it's literally just the conscious goal. So in those moments where maybe you're in a room and he's very loud and people aren't listening to you, maybe they're ignoring you, whether it's business or not, right? Other people have had the same example, whether it's with family, yeah. where you're in a, or just in a room with friends and your partner may be very confident, they take over and then that you become small. So are you just repeating in your mind in those moments? Like, oh, if this isn't about him, it's not. I have two different thoughts. One, is I will always think how I am really proud of him and happy for him if he's getting more attention, more recognition, more credit for something, because he does work his fucking ass off. And he is a great person and deserves all of those things. I have that line of thinking. So that's happening. It's like proud and happy for your wife, right? The other line of thinking I have is if people aren't listening to you and they need to hear it from him, what do you need to change about how you deliver this message? And that is the only way that I think we've been able to do what we do together, is that I look at it like, how can I get better so that they don't need to hear it from Alex, they can hear it from me. And I have found so much growth in thinking that way. And I think every time we blame our partner, you're stealing an opportunity from yourself to learn and grow. And I think that took me a few years to figure out, but when I did, it just unlocked everything. future that you don't even think about the past. I think that often we're so focused on the past, we can't even create a compelling future. You only have so much time to think about things during the day. And so I just found that I'm much happier focusing on the future. The weird thing is that the more that I have like built my life, you know, I've, when I was younger, like my dad, he put me in different therapy and all this stuff to talk through my mom's stuff. And I think more than anything, what helped me was just I just accepted it. I didn't try to change it. I didn't try to like think through the things that happened and how they've affected my behavior now. I accepted those things happened. And I look at my behavior now as a decision I'm making as an adult. You know, I'm not a child. And I can make decisions. I can observe I have behavior that's not conducive to what I want. And I can change it if I want to. And I think that often, for me at least, what's worked is that I don't have to go back to the past to decide why I am the way I am because I found that it doesn't make a difference if I change it or not. In fact, sometimes it delays it because it's like, oh, I have to figure out the reason of why I do this thing in order to then change it. I just say, I do this thing, how can I change it? And I think that, that has, that's worked well for me. And I think it, it takes, you know, for people who are younger or maybe it's like the thing that happened is more recent. It takes time because I think that when something bad happens, until you see the benefits that you can create from that thing. And it would make it all worth it. All worth it. All worth it. All worth it. And it would make it all worth it. All worth it. All worth it. 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 And I think that I was able to realize a lot of benefits because I really believe that 
if my parents hadn't gotten divorced and my mom hadn't gone down that path and you know kind of just become a different person i don't know if i would have been who i am today i don't know if i would have had leadership ability i don't know if i would have been able to lead myself to lead others because i think i would have been kept in a very different environment but because she did what she did i had to learn how to raise myself in many ways you know take care of myself and i think that is something i've been able to recall at many times and now i see the benefit of that i see how it's benefited me in life and so i truly am grateful for it it's not bs when i say it you know i used to hear people say I'm like, okay <laughs> you know I, you don't shot me as a bs person girl right like i'm like oh better than, better than thou better than thou and so i think that for a lot of people they just they have to get through like the the period of crap to then see the benefits of it and how it can transfer to many er- other areas of life if you're able to use what you learn for good as an adult if as a child you didn't necessarily see that i think it changed when i moved out of the house it's always our responsibility we always teach people what we tolerate and i realized that i was doing that and then i said you know i don't want to go back to what i was doing before because i think often it's like the pendulum swings here and then here and then we end up in the middle i try to always now just fast track to the middle but i didn't you know i went the soft way and then and then i realized you know that's not sustainable I remember the whole thing. And at the time, you weren't flex loose as you are now. You were like on the come up, you know what I mean? And um um um, um you you were so in the mode of uh accomplishing. You were in the hunt. 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 And you said if you want to accomplish your goals, you have to cut everything else out. You have to stop the partying. You have to stop the drinking. and you need to go all in on on the one thing and uh and uh and uh and uh with well, the crazy part about this is that we met by happenstance 14 years ago you know we, flex was early in his career i was non-existent in my career i was a freshman in college I kind of remember the context I remember the conversation because you were on the on the route to champion if not had you like you were right there um and it was just crystal clear that nothing else mattered to you that that was it nothing else mattered to you that was it that was it that was it that was it it wasn't even the words you said obviously you're like don't drink don't party you know stay out of trouble work hard etc like that stuff was the cliche but i think the thing that wasn't the cliche was how you said it was that like i could hear the conviction balls to bones that that's what you were about you were about you were about you were about like you weren't saying it you were living it that's why i carried the weight i mean a million people probably told me to work hard and whatever but like i remember that conversation there's three big things that's going on right now one is that we're, we're out an office here in Vegas that'll be a headquarters for a media team um we'll have you know we'll put probably a big 4 or 5000 square foot facility in there we'll do more content out of there and then i just will have all of my stuff which i like having so I've, it's been in storage for like 3 years so i'm very excited to get my own gym back um it's a big spot so it's like 17000 square feet so that should be good um that's one project that's kind of moving forward the other one uh is the book so my second book or a second general business book third book overall 100 million dollar leads um which is the sequel to 100 million dollar offers uh, is coming out but about 3500 hours into the book over the last 2 years um which for me the way that I I work is like the first 6 hours of my day is where I put push all my big projects forward and then the second like the next half or 4 hours ish or 5 hours of my day is is meetings and fires and whatever And so I've been working that way for probably almost a decade of just like splitting my day that way and that's worked well for me. So whatever happens in that first 6 hours is usually like my big focus and so for the last like 18 months the majority of my time of that 6 hours of creative time has been dedicated to either you know scripting out um kind of ideas about content stuff that I want to do and more realistically it's been just book So that's been like the, a big project and that's going to finally come to an end in the next, you know, 12 weeks or so. And then the third one is just doing deals because that's that's actually how we make money. And yeah. so that's what I spend most of my time doing. <laughs> yeah. And uh 
you know, you and I try to get a couple of workouts in, but as you said, that <laughs> that time is, you know, a, a non-compromise for you. I try to bend uh, bend the wrist and try to get you in early, but no, as you said, that, that that is that part of the day, that first early rising is all dedicated to to, to your businesses and stuff, and then the, the late afternoon is when it opens up for you. To, yeah, I like to like fatigue my mind and then my body's fresh at the end of the day, but my brain is spent and then I go work out. And that's been like my favorite way to do it. I've done first thing in the morning. I've done uh, late morning. I've done split shift, which is a good, I like split shift a lot, which is like that lunchtime lift at like 11 to you know one ish. And then you have your second half of the day. Like that's a nice reset. I think I'll be probably doing more of that when I have the office gym. Um, but if I don't have that set up, then I think I end up defaulting to like the four o'clock workout um, and then having dinner afterwards. So it's kind of like marks the end of my day. You know, you and I try to get a couple of workouts in, but as you said, that that time is, you know, a no non-compromise for you. A no non-compromise for you. You have to cut everything else out. You have to stop the party. You have to stop the drinking. And you need to go all in on, on the one thing. On the one thing. On the one thing. And you need to go all in on, on the one thing. You're such a freaking badass. But in going back into your story, you were 85 pounds overweight. You were arrested six times. You were in drugs, alcohol. You barely had any friends. And now, homie, you sit here, a freaking badass, that's in a beautiful relationship, that's so damn confident, and have a company that's earning revenue, $100 million, I believe. What the hell were you able to do to your habits in order so that you can freaking show up now? And what are the habits you've actually had to ditch in order to be a freaking badass and go after that dream of yours? tell you something that I tell people when they always come to me and they're trying to lose weight, which is, they say, like, Layla, I just can't be consistent. And I'm like, that's not true, because you do consistently overeat, <laughs> right? And so I think... That rings so true to me because there were a lot of things that I did consistently that got me those results. And I had to then consistently do other things to get the results that I get now. But I think that for a very long period of time when I was making that change, a lot of people say like, did you use positive visualization? And like, I didn't have any of that. What I was able to channel or tap into was all these negative feelings that I had. And I was able to then say like, I'm angry and I'm anxious and I have all this like angst inside of me. Angst inside of me? Angst inside of me? Angst inside of me? Inside of me. Inside of me. And instead of putting it into all of these things, I'm gonna put it into things that are gonna make my life better. The day after, the sixth time I was arrested, my dad, they brought me to my parents' house because whatever, they didn't know where my house was and I think that was what was on my license at the time. And I woke up and I, you know, the immediate feeling of like absolute dread, right? Just like panic. And I was like, oh my God, I don't remember what happened last night, what happened. And then I like looked to the nightstand and then there's like the arrest record. And I was like, I just remember like the, the worst anxiety I've ever had, like settling in, just feeling ashamed, just feeling honestly disgusted with myself. And I had to walk downstairs and my dad was sitting on the couch and I sat down because I, I'm in his house. He obviously had to deal with whatever happened last night. I'm not gonna be disrespectful, I'm just like leave. And sat down waiting just like thinking he's like this is when he's gonna let me have it right like he's just gonna like rip into me and instead I just remember he sat down he looked at me and he almost had like tears in his eyes and he was like you can do whatever you want I can't control you you don't even live in this house anymore it's like but I just want to tell you that I do think that if you keep doing what you're doing you're going to kill yourself and I just felt so guilty because my dad He's such a good person. Like, he's just like the best person I know. And he's always been there for me. He's always encouraged me. He's always been a cheerleader for me when there was no evidence or reason to be. And I just felt horrible that I, like, whether it was, you know, I think it then equated to like feeling horrible about myself, but I felt horrible that I did that to him. And in that moment, I went upstairs and then I got my stuff and I went home to my apartment. And I just decided, I was like, 
I'm not, it, it wasn't like, what are you gonna stop doing? It was, you are now a different person. Who you are today is no longer who you are tomorrow. You don't do anything like what Layla has been doing. Layla who's getting arrested and drinking and hanging out with these people. No longer, that's not who you are. You are a new person. And I just remember saying that to myself. I was like, I have a new identity and I am now a new person. 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 I'm angry and I'm anxious and I have all this like angst inside of me. Angst inside of me. Angst inside of me. Angst inside of me. Inside of me. Inside of me. Inside of me. angry and I'm anxious and I have all this like angst inside of me angst inside of me angst inside of me angst inside of me 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 angst inside of me angst inside of me angst inside of me 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 Demons be gone. Be gone, demons. Be gone. Leave this studio! So, uh, lost everything in 2016. Yeah. And then lost everything again in the first quarter of 2017. <laughs> And then the turnaround of like when the model switched from, uh, you know, us flying out to then trying the weight loss thing to then trying the true licensing thing that happened like uh, April, May-ish of 2017. We finished that year at I think 6'8 top line, 3 million in bottom line, and then the first full year, so 2018, I think we did 26 million top line, 17 million in bottom line. And then uh, next year we did 37, and, you know, that was when we started the supplement company and then kind of combined was 37 million top line um and then COVID hit 2020 and so that hurt both of those businesses um but uh we still had a very stable base and so it still made the company pretty valuable in and of itself and so that's what we sold to um American Pacific Group for 46.2 in 2021 46 to the game 46.2 million yeah Do you ever sit back and think, do you have the moments where you, you kind of go back into that time of waking up with that crazy anxiety of thinking, shit, how am I going to get through this day and how am I going to, you know, deliver? Mm -hmm. All the time. 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 Do, but you, do you give yourself a, you know, flowers to be like wow I've, I've, I've taken myself from you had you had yourself did you celebrate yourself after your second Olympia on your way to your third this is not my this is my podcast, <laughs> this is my podcast. <laughs> I understand, uh, I understand the mentality you and yeah. I share off the podcast, but yeah. for me to for me to, to to explain to the viewers like to see and um, you know and to hear these stories and see you walking around and staying as humble as what you are because let's be honest there's guys who are make a, a million bucks and now they're driving this they're driving that you are probably one of the most humblest guys who have got you know an insane work ethic and you don't come off the gas for nothing and uh, for me to, to, to see that I think that's a good person for me to have around me in my life just to, to see what your mentality is to you know grow and scale in and you know, back into the next project or consuming yourself with the next big thing and uh, not coming up for air ever. I want since I've known you anyway. Yeah. It's, um, 
I think it gets into a wider worldview perspective of like, you know, for me, I think the purpose of my my life is learning. So like that's that's people like, what's the meaning of your life? For me, it's learning. And so learning I can only do through doing. And so if I want to leave no potential Alex uh, on the table when I die, then I have to expose to myself, you know, I have to expose myself to as many hard things as I can. And it doesn't have to be hard, like, yeah, cold plunges and whatever. You know what I mean? It's just like challenging circumstances that will create character. Because, you know, if, you know if, at least for me, if I think about myself at the end of my life, I would hope to be somebody who has strong character. But in order to achieve strong character, you have to go through hard things. All of us want to have really good character, except none of us want to go through hard things. And so it's like you can't have one without the other. And so if I had to pick, I'd rather have the character and the scars to show it rather than none of the character um, and had a soft life. That being said, I mean, the biggest contributor to where I am now is luck by far. And so I've done what I can with what I've been given. And I still think I have a lot um, that I have underutilized. And so I just live in constant fear of that, which is, uh, I'm not religious, but my favorite verse in the Bible is to whom much is given, much is expected. And so I feel like I've been given a lot. And so to the same degree, I feel like a lot is expected of me. And that's mostly just me expecting that of me. And that's mostly just me expecting that of me. Mostly just me expecting that of me. Mostly just me, 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 expecting that of me. Demons be gone. Be gone, demons. I love that you've actually just established. I think that's really where it starts. Start, start, start. But you establish before you even really get deep into a relationship how we Tom and I call them the rules of engagement, right? What are our rules of engagement in our marriage? And do we agree to them? And then making sure that you identify what those are ahead of time yeah. so that you both are working in accordance, I think is super strong. And then there was that other piece that you said of like, it really does make a difference of how you see that person, right? You said, I respect him, I admire him, I look up to him, I, you know, want to listen to him. And so I think all of those points are a great way of assessing. Whether it's like, if you respect them, if you really do cherish them and they you think that they respect you back then maybe there's something that you're not seeing i think it's when they can be someone who can be either overbearing or toxic or commanding that, that, that that's where it becomes i think very detrimental to the relationship the relationship we have a lot of influence over the people that we're in relationships with and if somebody is using that to make your life worse i think that's different than you are making a decision that's maybe short-sighted and maybe they're looking at a long-term consequence of your decision. And then maybe you step back and say like, hey, maybe I'm not looking at long-term consequences of this decision. Versus somebody who's trying to control you and you're looking at it saying, this is a good decision in the short and long-term and they're telling me not to do it. Yeah, I love that. Being in the fitness industry, I assume you've obviously gone to these like fitness events where, 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 where guys are just like shirtless, they're muscles are, you know, bulging out, and then women are walking around in bikinis, and when we first started Quest, and it was, like, really growing, I remember being very jealous about the women that were trying to hit on my husband, like, initially. And I immediately went to myself, it's like, why are you so insecure, Lisa? Yeah. Like, you trust your husband, don't you? And I was like, the answer was yes, right? So, okay, I trust him, I know that nothing's ever going to lead to this. So why are you insecure when you see Maybe a woman talking to your husband, husband and flirting, you know, even when it sounds off, right? If you're from a distance, you can tell when someone's flirting. Yeah. And that, I went deep, and that actually really helped me build my confidence. Mm. Because I realized that I was always pointing at the girl, and I think the reason was, is I, in my head, like, she's so beautiful, she's so, you know, right. she's tan, she's got like fluffy boobs, and, yeah. you know, all of it's like fluffy muscles, and here I am, and just like flats, a hairnet, pretty much all day, every day, and questions, I was building our shipping department, yeah. so it's just in a hairnet most of the time. You've got to like food grade, can't like wear makeup, and certain things you can't do. And so I just, in the realizing that it's really important to like, really be really careful about what you're saying, and it's not like you can just be like, I'm just gonna 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 be